University of Calgary. The manage marketing manager. Oops, there's a typo. Sorry, at Mobileout, which is a tech startup, and um, I am an Ateneo senior high school graduate, and I graduated last year. So um, if you're here, you're probably interested in learning more about Canada and what it has to offer. And yeah, I'm here to help you. So um, yeah, just just listen. <laughs> so for the general application process um in Canada, um. Personally, for me, um, compared to U.S. universities, I think Canada um, was way easier for me. Um, and I even managed to grab my application in like March of last year. So I usually um, applications in other schools start way earlier. But for me, um, I applied late. However, this is your sign not to grab. So if I were to do um, everything again, um um as early as August to September. So during that period I'd start prospecting my universities, doing my research, attending talks, and um I believe some schools already open as early as August, such as the University of Calgary. Um so yeah. Um for November to December of twenty twenty four, um this is when the deadline of the early um, admissions are and if you want to get into these universities with scholarships um, that manage to give you a full ride um, I believe the deadline for this is the first week of December and then for January to March this is when the results are usually released um, and you can continue to apply if you haven't yet and for March to June of 2025 this is when you can start applying your student visa and gathering your documents. And then July 2025 to August 2025, you can prepare for your leave to Canada. So, um, yeah, I just presented my timeline. Um, and I know you're wondering, like, why she's starting with the timeline and not showing us, like, why Canada in the first place? I will tell you more later. Don't worry. Um, but, yeah, I started with the timeline because... Um, I think it's applicable then not only to Canada but to other schools. But in general, I'd like to start by saying like Canada is honestly it's not as hard as it seems, like um application wise. So if you have the time and the resources, I'd say do it. So um as you can see, um these are the requirements when applying to Canadian universities, and it's really not a lot. So if you're already applying to like Philippine universities or the U.S. universities. Um, I think we can apply towards Canadian universities. So um, yeah, it's not a lot. You just need to fill up the application portal, your high school transcript. Um, if you took IB or if you went to an international school, there is a good chance that your units can be transferred. Um, and um, yeah. You just need to make sure that you have a good GPA and average as Canadian universities mainly just really focus on your GPA um, and not really on your extracurriculars. Um, next is the English language proficiency test. So Duolingo, TOEFL, IELTS. And I honestly recommend Duolingo as you can take it from anywhere um, and it's very accessible. I know if you're from the province, like personally for me I I was from the province um prior to moving to Ateneo Senior High like I know there's not much resources in terms of like like centers for taking these tests so um yeah I'd prefer like I'd suggest like to do the day like as you can also get your results in like two days um next is your certificate enrollment in high school and essay prompts um I know like Essay prompts are a big thing with U.S. universities, but with Canadian universities, they don't really ask for much. Um, they'll only really ask for essay prompts if it's like a major that's very um exclusive. For example, neuroscience. Um, I believe in the University of Calgary, they ask like certain um health or med related majors to do essay prompts. Um, but for the most part, it's really about your grades. So if if you have good grades, um, I do not see a reason to why you shouldn't apply. I think, um, I think for sure you will most likely get in. Honestly, um, however, 
Um, when it comes to financial aid and scholarships, I think this is really where um, your extracurriculars and your writing skills will really shine. So um, while Canadian universities are less cheaper than U.S. universities, um, in addition to that, they're also pretty generous when it comes to financial aid and scholarships. So I categorize them into three. So we have prestigious scholarships, bursaries, and continuing awards. Um, for prestigious scholarships, the reason why I mentioned the timeline earlier and why I suggested that you apply earlier is because the deadline for these scholarships are usually um, in the first week of December. So even if, even if they have a longer timeline and a higher acceptance rate, um, the scholarships is where um, it's more exclusive. So um, if you want to um, get, um, yeah, it's recommended you apply early. So for prestigious scholarships, these are um, only given to you um, during your entrance. So like on your first year and most of the time it's, you can carry it forward or renewable for the other years. Um, but yeah, because you need to apply to, you need to have, you need to fill up a lot of requirements in order to get them. So for prestigious scholarships, they usually require essay prompts for them to get to know more about you. Um, you need to submit your applications early. Um, you need to show proof and validation of, for example, um, your extracurriculars. You need to you need to have um evidence of the things that you did. Um, and really make them show why they should have you as their scholar. Um, and in some cases, they do require nomination and recommendation from your high school. Um, I believe it was UBC um, that said, like, you should be the only one nominated from your school um, in order to um, be applicable for that certain scholarship. And yeah, like I mentioned, you have to have good extracurriculars. Next are bursaries. So these are focused on need rather um, than merit. So if as long as you get in and you maintain a certain GPA, um, most likely you will be getting a bursary. Personally, me, um, I've been getting bursaries. It's not a lot. It's not in comparison to prestigious scholarships where they give you a full ride or like half your tuition. Bursaries are like just a thousand dollars, five hundred dollars, but they do make a big difference. And um, you can usually get one every semester. And then next is the continuing student award. So, like I mentioned, the reason like why I like Canada a lot is because they are generous when it comes to financial aid. So on top of the bursaries, um, if you manage to make some sort of contribution to the school, um, you can apply for continuing student um, awards. So these are usually funded by the school um, or even some external donors. Um, so yeah, they're usually open for students after their first year of university. So, um... I mentioned the logistics and now it's more on like what should you expect moving forward or um applying to Canada. So honestly, in all of this, I think passing passing your ideal or your dream Canadian university is honestly the easy part. And the hard part is really what comes after. So the visa process and really adjusting to your new home. I won't really expand on the visa requirements as I think they are self-explanatory. So if you want, you can take a screenshot um, of this. And if you have any questions, you can just message me um, after you pass. <laughs> yeah. Um, so the visa part and passing your university, um, they're, they're manageable. that's really um, once you're there. Because if you're going to be applying to university, um, expect the next four years. Plus, if you choose to stay, um, the next three years, because you have an opportunity for like a postgraduate permit. Um, expect the next seven years um to be the craziest parts of your life. So um yeah, I'm gonna talk more about um my Canada journey. So um first I'll talk about the culture and the way of living. So honestly, I'm a firm believer that your university experience depends on you and what you make out of it. Um I do think Calgary, in comparison to Toronto or to Vancouver, it's more on, more on the smaller end. But regardless, I enjoy my experience and I like how small the city is also um, 
I'm also a believer in the saying that I'd rather be a big fish in a small pond temporarily because I like to stand out and make use of the resources that I have there. So, um, yeah, um, in Canada, I do think Canada is very um, inclusive. Um, I do think it's safe. Um, I think it's fun. And a lot of these universities, a lot of Canadian universities are really a target for international students. So really expect them to be welcoming, have a lot of events, and really make you feel at home. Um, although I expected to cry when I first got there, um, I didn't cry. In fact, I do think like I just I was just having fun every day and really embracing that independence. Um, if you're, I know it's hard thinking about like moving to the other side of the world, but. Honestly, if you have the opportunities, if the opportunity is given given to you, I say go for it. As I do think, like Canadians, they're very welcoming, and there are a lot of people who are in the same boat as you, um, from all around the world, um, who I know will be there and willing to help you, um. So yeah, in the pictures, um, that's my school, um, Jane, and there are a lot of um games in Canada it's really common to have football games and hockey games so um yeah if you're into that yes go for it and a lot of them just like how it is very like or culture in the Philippines I do believe it's also the same um in Canada and it's it's nice um seeing different people from all around the world um how they approach certain situations um just like you like having that org culture somewhere else and working with different minded people, I think it's it's a it's an experience that in itself I'm grateful for, having the opportunity to work with many different types of people. Um also like I mentioned earlier, I'm also the marketing manager um for a tech startup. And I started out as, as an intern. So from moving to Canada a year ago and um transitioning from an intern to a manager and having the opportunity to have fun, be in org, study, and also work and gain experience. That is something that I am grateful for and I know I wouldn't manage to do in any way. Um, the people there are really nice, as you can see. It's, it's a very inclusive bunch of people and um. I'm sure if you do choose to go to Canada, Canadians are known um as being the most friendly people ever. So yes. Um next. Um oh something I need to mention, the weather. Um the weather is bipolar. Um uh, in Calgary though, most of the time it's sunny, even if it's snowing. So um yeah. If you're um scared of hail or the snow, um I do think that's something to think about, but um, we have all four seasons, and besides the snow, like the intensive snow for like a month or two, um, most of the time, um, it's great. Next is um inclusivity, safety, and well being in Canada. Um, Canada, um, or well, at least my school, um, we have the Alberta Health Card, so. If you're wondering like how much are the costs or like for insurance, etc., you can obtain an Alberta health card for free, which allows you to have free checkups. Um, and your school and tuition fee most likely comes with an insurance. So this includes eye checkup, discounts, etc. Safety wise, I believe Canada in general is safe. Like it's one of the most safest places. But if you're thinking about going to Calgary, um, it is the safest. I do think it's one of the most safest places in the world. And it's in the top 10 of the most livable places in the world. So, um, yeah, I don't think I should be as worried in that sense. And, of course, inclusivity. Um, Canada is known to be, like, a place where a lot of people immigrate to. Um, which is why they have a lot of resources set up for international students and for immigrants. And um, they, I do think they're also um, inclusive in, for example, regardless of what your race is or your sexuality or your gender, I do think that they provide the resources to make you feel safe um, in that sense. And for me, at least, um, in the community that I'm in, 
they're also very open into taking a stand in what you believe in. Um, they're open to hearing the opinions of the people. Um, you know, protests, filing reports, and all that. So, um, in that sense, I do think Canada is a great place. Um, okay. Next is the cost of living. Honestly, um, Canada. Expenses in Canada differ. So if you're going to a big city like Vancouver and Toronto, um, expect that U of T and UBC, um, and even Montreal like McGill, expect that their tuition fee would be higher, and um, outside tuition their tax rates would also um be higher. Um, personally for me, I pick Calgary. Um, because not only because of the things I said um about how good it is, but like. It is more on the less expensive side, and I happen to have cousins there who are willing, um, to help me adjust. So that was a factor in my decision. But yeah, overall, um, University of Calgary, um, does have, um, although it's still quite expensive, it's more on the, um, the lower end in comparison to, um those other universities in bigger provinces. So um yeah for tuition fee it ranges around thirty thousand to sixty five thousand Canadian. Um next is your residence or your dormitory, just six thousand to one thousand three thousand thirteen thousand Canadian if you do choose to live outside. Um if you're going to live outside alone, um it would be cheaper to stay in residence. But if you manage to find um you know roommates or if you have other friends who are willing to go to Canada with you um, I do think you'll be cheaper staying outside. Um, next is the groceries per month, and um, you know other expenses, which can range range from three hundred to five hundred Canadian. Um, I do think it's already advantageous that your tuition already comes with insurance, and that um, yeah, a lot a reason why people really go to Canada is because of the healthcare, which is um really helpful. Like um on one's expenses. Um, I realize that although citizens have more advantage, advantages in terms of healthcare, I do think international students, um, although they didn't get they don't get one hundred percent of the benefits, they do still manage to get some. And that was something that um I really like. Um and yeah, um Canada's also more lenient when it comes to part time jobs outside campus. Um so you can work for twenty hours a week outside. So if you have time to do that. Personally, for me, I had time. Um, well, I'm only taking four or five subjects. So, um, yeah, I do think if you're looking to make some extra cash or help with your allowance, um, I do think um, you have plenty of time to do that. Um, and like to do this for international students, I know it's hard going to a place all by yourself. Um especially i don't know if you guys have relatives there personally for me i had relatives which made my move easier but um a lot of these universities if not all i'm pretty sure all of them have um a welcome center and international student services so in my case in the university of calgary we have an office dedicated just to welcoming international students and making them feel at home um they also offer like therapy sessions they offer um a lot of talks in terms of managing your finances. And even if you want to bring your family there, they offer talks about that. Um, and they also offer a lot of mentorship programs, whether it be in your major or whether it be um, like with another upper year international student, um, they offer a lot of mentorship programs in different senses, whether it be applying a job or um, you adjusting or trying out like wanting to... Um, join a certain org there are a lot of mentorship programs that you can join and lastly is bonfires meetups and gatherings um i think this not only applies to you being an international student um it's for everyone so if you want to meet domestic students or other international students you can but yeah there are a lot of gatherings solely just for international students so that you can meet people who are just like you um so yeah there are plenty of more resources. Um, I can share them to you after this talk. Just feel free to message me. Um, so yeah, um, I'm about to end. So why Canada and why Calgary? Um, overall, I do think um Canada is an amazing place. If you're, 
if you're looking for opportunity, um, I do think Canada offers a good balance in your lifestyle, academics, and even in gaining um, real-world experience. Um, for me, I managed to join extracurriculars, um, become an intern while studying, and now a marketing manager. Um, people who are so amazing um and next why calgary um like i mentioned it was more about the cost but overall i do think calgary is one of the safest places and um one of the safest places and has the most international students um and yeah i just i love the mountains i love i love nature so that's also something i took into consideration with my decision um so that's it. Thank you so much for listening. Um, I do believe I'm running out of time. But if you want to know more about Canada or if you're currently working on your visa even, feel free to reach out to me. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Sam. We will now be opening the talk to any questions that the audience may ask. If the audience would like to say a question, they may either unmute their microphone or send their messages through the chat box below. Um, I think it was a 3.93 yeah but honestly um, I do think you will get in I don't know who you are or what your GPA is but I have a feeling you will get in I do think they are more lenient in that sense they, I do think they are more lenient but I, the GPA um, also depends on what major you're in so for example if you're applying in business um, I believe the equivalent of what they're looking for is like around an 83 to get into business. I don't know what that is um, in the 4.0 scale, but I don't think that's a lot. So yeah, but if you're aiming for like nursing, oh, I think you should aim towards like a 3.9 or so. Family in Canada increase your chances in getting in. Um, my parents are here. It was more of my cousins. They don't really ask that in the application portal. If you mean, um, if you mean like, like if it's like the university itself, your family has nothing to do with you. But if you mean visa wise, I do think it helped me because they the when presenting like your letter to the IRCC or like the government of Canada, they will ask you like, oh, do you have family there? Or do you have the funds to go there? So I do think it like helped a little bit because it kind of secured them with the idea like, oh, in case something happens to me, I still have people to help me or to run into. So I do think it helped in that case. But if you're, if you mean like solely on the university itself, um, your family has nothing to do with you, it's more of your GPA. Uh, we also have another question. Is it possible to study in French? Uh, um, <laughs> universities will have it in English, and I believe Quebec is the only one where French would you know apply. For example, like McGill or Concordia, I believe. But I do think most of their classes are in English, so everything is in English. I think the only time where you will use French is outside, so... Um, if you plan on studying in Quebec, knowing French would give you this edge after you graduate or when looking for jobs, like part-time jobs or for internships, because there are some jobs or internships that ask if you do know how to speak French and it gives you an edge in that sense. But everywhere else outside Quebec, um, it won't matter. On that note, like also, what are the post graduation work opportunities? It basically means you get three years after graduating, um, you know, to find a job, gain experience. It doesn't necessarily mean you're gonna stay. It's just a work permit. So, um, for example, after your internship or your co-op, where the school is ended, and they somehow manage to give you a return offer. Um, you can continue working for that company or you can find a company. So basically you have three years to find and to work. Um, 
I don't really know what opportunities are there. It's really up to you. It really depends on the companies or like the job banks. But I do know that right now they are more they're prioritizing um tech and agricultural um fields more. So um yeah, they're prioritizing those types of jobs right now. Do you think parts in Canada suitable for skateboarding? Um, I do think like three fourths of the year you will be able to, um, skateboard. People in Calgary skateboarding, etc. But yeah, when when it's snowing, uh, you won't be able to. Um, I do think Calgary snows more than most places. Um, Toronto at least, but um. They snow in all of them. So, um, yeah. You can skateboard. It's just not throughout the whole year. To study in Canada. Um, with people who do not have family, a lot of my friends there, I think... I think most of my friends aren't even Canadian and they all went alone. Um, if you want to study in Canada but you don't have family living in Canada, it's, I, I do think it's like the same thing as for every country. Um, you just need a <laughs> what your goal is. Um, and remember that you're going there for yourself. Um, it's important to really stick, stick with your friends. Like, really learn how to make friends and put yourself outside your comfort zone as these are the people who can help you. Um, I do think the advantage of staying in Canada, even if you don't have family, is that like, they're more um, generous in terms of financial aid and job opportunities and part-time. So um, if ever it's a financial concern, um, I do think it's possible for you to make it work. Um, personally, University of Calgary also offers like emergency financial assistance and even loans so um that's also something that you know to consider at the back of your head um but beyond like financial concerns um if you want to study in canada but don't have family it's it's really not about the external stuff eh? it's more about about you like you making the most of what you have and the thing with canada is a lot of them like a lot of the universities really have resources to help you adjust, um, and like the really like designated service centers solely focused on helping you adjust in school and even outside school. So, um, I do think take advantage of that and um make the most of what you have. There are a lot of networking events also there. Um, if you wanna meet other people or other alumni, um, if you're looking for a job in the future. Like if you're aiming towards a certain goal, like, oh, I want to, in Canada, I want to be an engineer. Or I want to be a consultant. There are plenty of opportunities for you um, to do that and make your, um, your dream. More about you putting yourself out there and taking advantage of the things they have because I'm sure they'll be, I'm sure there's a lot of stuff um, that you can benefit from. Um, this PGWP is applicable with the new immigration regulations. Okay, that is a good question. Personally, um, I'm not sure. I do know it's still it applies to the people who applied before last year or this year. Cause yeah, I know they're changing the immigration regulations. Um, for me, it personally applies. I believe I wouldn't know what would happen if you apply now. So I'm so sorry. I don't know how to answer that. Um, however, um, you can message me and I'll get back to you. Um, my tita honestly owns an immigration, um, an immigration company to Canada. So I'll have to ask her if if you guys have questions like regarding immigration or visa wise. Like, um, I'll do my best to get back to you if you just message me. So yes. Thank you so much, Jen. I'm so sorry. I can't answer it. Thank you also so much. For those who have any additional questions, you guys may proceed to the Google Forms shown on the screen right now. That will be sent in the chat box also. We would like to give thanks to the event sponsors, Limbs Review Center, AUG Student Service, and AECC Study Abroad Consultant. Don't forget that we are still selling some of our merch. Please check out the link that will be sent below. 
We still have shirts, stickers, pins, and many more. So why not check it out in your spare time throughout the conference proper?